Next what I want to do is I want to show you how uh, to create a faceted cup like this. This is just a lot of fun. My students often ask me how to do this, so I wanted to make sure that I have a video for them so they can see how I do it. Oops, I have a price tag on there. Uh, what I typically do is I will um, trim a nice bottom that leaves a nice angle here, and I will use a cutoff wire to get those facets. So, what I'm going to do is I start off with a slightly thicker, heavier piece of clay, I should say. Um, this is a two pound hunk. So it's um, got to be a little bit heavier because I'm going to be um, faceting the walls, which will be thicker than normal walls. If you start off with a small piece of clay and you facet, it, you could easily just kind of go through. So the centering and opening and the pooling are all very similar with the exception of, I leave the walls thicker. Now you may have seen that I just pulled up that first pull with that hand position of that duck bill. I do that sometimes. I find that it's, it's easier um, I sometimes have tendonitis flare up and it's easier on my hands when I do it that way. When you are a potter and you have a lot of repetitive motions, you'll find that certain things can aggravate your muscles or your tendons after a while and it's nice to have some alternate hand motions to help prevent irritation. All right. So, got a nice thick wall right down here, and I am going to thin out my rim. Okay, so the rim is getting thinned before I go to facet the wall. And I am going to drip a little bit more water in here. I'm going to push out just at the base of the wall because I can see that it was curving on the inside. I want the base of the wall to be nice and straight. There we go. When I'm making a cup, I, I really don't like the inside of the cup to be bowl-like. I, I want it to be flat bottom with a corner down in there, which I now have. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the slip off my hands going to stop my wheel for this. And then there are various things that you could use to do this. You could use, say, a cutoff wire like this. Or you could use, this is kind of fun, I like this. I use this a lot. It's, um, it's an old cheese slicer that's missing the little uh, bar that's in there. It like fell apart years ago and I'm like, hey, I can use that for clay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I cut straight down and peel off a chunk. I peel off a facet. Let me do that toward the camera. Okay, I go straight down and I overlap it with the last one just a little bit and peel that off. I usually do it towards me because it's easier for me to see, but I'll do it this way for you all. And, of course, you can imagine if you can do this with a couple, you can do it with bowls, lots of different forms. Again, my students usually see one of my pieces in the room at school. And they're like, oh, how did you do that? Now, in this case, I got it stuck, so I'm just going to carefully use a needle tool to pull it off. The hardest thing about this is remembering to leave the walls thick. When I first learned this method... I had to like discipline myself to stop thinning the walls because once it's thinned it's pretty much impossible to do this. You still need it kind of thick. Alright. Okay. Alright, so there are all my facets. Now I'm going to do a couple more things. Alright, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going <clears> to <throat> 
trim away some of the base. This will have a trimmed foot anyway later, so it's not going to be this messy. But what I'm going to do right here is I'm now going to put my hand on the inside. If you see the difference here, you can see this has a belly. So what I'm going to do is on the inside only, I'm going to put my hand on the inside to push it out. I'm going to put some water on my fingers. And if you have a thin, one thin area like I kind of do, it stretches more in that area and it kind of throws the whole thing off. Let's see. There we go. Alright, so the one area where it's thinner and it's stretched a little bit more, that's where I will strategically place my handle. And there we go. That's how you facet a cup. And I'll show you more when I go to uh, trim that, and uh, you'll see how it comes out then. But here, here's what I'm trying to go for, right?